Uh, we put a lot of effort there, but we think that, you know, just because I say I am or want to be, I could be exempt from these forces. Uh, so, so that is another challenge. Um, and again, generalizing, suggesting uh, race has meaning for white people will often trigger white fragility. We think if we don't see it, it isn't there, and you haven't explained it to me yet enough so that I understand it, so I'm not really sure that could be valid. And we tend to use our reactions as a way out. There is no way we're going to get where we need to go from a place of white comfort. And I am comfortable uh, racially virtually 24-7. Uh, so that is not my goal, but we will often use that lack of comfort as a sign that something's been done wrong rather than something probably has been done right. And that we need to use that as a way in to the deeper framework that would cause such upset. Uh, rather than use it as a way out. And we don't understand racism as a system. So, th so this is another key challenge which leads me uh, to chapter two, which is racism and white supremacy. Um, racism is a system, not an event. Right? And it's the system we're in. And none of us could be and none of us were exempt from its forces. But the way we're taught to think of racism functions beautifully to not only obscure the system, but to exempt us from its forces, right? Or to have us uh, believe we are exempted from its forces. Now, as a white person, I was raised to be racially illiterate. And I, I actually think all white people are raised to be racially illiterate um, in this culture. And in gaining racial literacy, uh, I have had to understand not just the collective dynamics and dimensions of racism, but how racism uh, impacts different groups who are perceived and defined as people of color, how it uh, impacts them differently, right? So not all peoples of color experience racism differently. The things I've internalized about different groups is different, uh, where and how they are positioned always in relation to whiteness or far away from whiteness, and how that manifests, right? All of that must be understood. Um, but after a good 20 plus years of talking day in and day out to white people about racism, I feel very confident to say that there is something profoundly anti-black in this culture and that nothing seems to turn white people's cranks of resentment, like thinking black people got something over on us that they didn't deserve. And, and the deeper uh, belief is that they're inherently undeserving. I believe in the, in the white mind, black people are the ultimate racial other, right? And that there are these bookends. And again, your perceived proximity to each end of that impacts how you're going to experience uh, your racialization. So having said that, and, and um, not really having time to do history, I just want to give you one glance at the trajectory of anti-blackness in this, in this country since its beginning, and this slide will be deliberately dense. We can literally think about it as state-sanctioned, organized crime but at least discrimination against African Americans from the beginning. And it starts with kidnapping and 300 years of enslavement, torture, rape, and brutality, and it carries on. And about a quarter of the way in, you see bans on testifying against whites, which made it technically legal to murder black people in this country, and you are now in my lifetime. And, and I, I, I'm going to say it again because again, a lot of white people seem to think it, it ended a long time ago. We are in my lifetime about a quarter of the way through that slide. And then we see about two-thirds of the way through employment discrimination, and we are in 2018 with copious empirical evidence. Right? So let's pick it up there. Employment discrimination, educational discrimination, bias laws and policing practices, white flight, subprime mortgages, mass incarceration, the school to prison pipeline, disproportionate special ed referrals and punishments, testing, tracking, school funding, biased media representation, historical omissions, and so much more. It is a system, not an event. It's the system we're in, and none of us could be, and none of us were exempt from its forces. Historically, we projected our sins onto the black body. Right? Lazy, shiftless, criminal. We projected our sins onto the black body. 
Today, in addition to doing that, we obscure the system of racism that we uphold and we exempt ourselves from its forces. Right? And we do this in a way that appears to be progressive, right? That, that race doesn't matter to us. 